Hey, Glencliff friends. If you were unable to join us on Sunday morning, we just wanted to give you a clip of what we all talked about together in our um, adult education time, where we're looking at um, the lectionary and also seeing how that talks about justice in our lives, how that speaks to justice in our lives, and then how can we reflect that back out into the world um, so we wanted to share those things with you. Also, um, we had a birthday this past week. Roy A. had a birthday on Saturday. So if you want to call or text him, I know that he will um, be glad to hear from you. Um, I did just hear from Marie and her brother passed away from pneumonia. Um, so keep Marie and Johnny and Marie's family in your prayers um, as you go about your prayers this week. And as we are entering some time here together, um, I wanna share a prayer with you that we prayed together um, Sunday morning. Let us pray. Disturb us, O oh Lord, when we are too well pleased with ourselves, when our dreams have come true because we have dreamed too little, because we have sailed too close to the shore. Disturb us, O oh Lord, when the abundance of things we possess, we have lost our thirst for the water of life. When having fallen in love with time, we have ceased to dream of eternity and in our efforts to build a new earth, we have allowed our vision of heaven to grow dim. Stir us, O oh Lord, to dare more boldly, to venture into wider seas where storms show thy mastery. Where losing sight of land, we shall find the stars in the name of the creator who pushed back the horizons of our hopes and invited the brave to follow. Amen. That was a prayer from Bishop Desmond Tutu. Our scripture lesson on Sunday was from Mark. It was Mark chapter 1, verses 29 through 39. I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version. Again, that's Mark chapter 1, verses 29 to 39, if you would like to go back and read it later. As soon as they left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew, with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever and they told him about her at once. And he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her and she began to serve them and provide hospitality. That evening at sunset, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons and the whole city was gathered around the door and he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons and he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place and there he prayed and Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, everyone is searching for you. He answered, let us go on to the neighboring towns so I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues, healing and casting out demons. healing and casting out demons. Jesus offers us freedom from what ails us. 
and freedom of restoration and vocation, how can we aid Jesus in this freedom for everyone, for ourselves, for our neighbors? This scripture is here to show us that God restores us in ways we need to fulfill, ways that we need so that we can fulfill our callings in life. And it shows us that God equips us to help restore others and free others to do what they are called to as well. It's what we call co-liberation, when we can both be freed to be what God has called us to be. So what are those things that we can do in the world to free ourselves, to free our neighbors. Who was healed in this story? Who was healed in the story of the scripture I just read? And what might it mean for every member of the community when someone is healed, when someone finds freedom, when you or your neighbor finds freedom, how does that affect the rest of the community? And what keeps us from that work? What keeps us from the work of restoring freedom and wholeness to each person? What holds us back? And then how can we walk alongside others? that have traditionally been kept from freedom. I'm sure you can think of many individuals or groups of people who have been kept from freedom. And what is it that we can do? What is it that you can do? What can I do to help restore freedom and wholeness, which is what we're called to do just like Christ was called into the home to heal Simon's mother-in-law. She was being kept from her wholeness, from being able to provide hospitality for people who were in, a, in her home who came to visit. And by healing her, Christ restored her to her wholeness so that she could live in freedom and do the things that she was called to do. What can we do? What can we do to help restore others who've been hurt so that they may be brought back fully into community, remembered into community? On Sunday, we all talked about ways that we can help to remember each other into community. Um, and it doesn't have to be hard things. We oftentimes think of people who are loving and um, justice creators as people who are super radical and they've done amazing, incredible work in the world and some of them have but sometimes it's the most basic things we can do. We can pick up the phone and call someone we haven't talked to in a while, right? We can try to bust through that isolation that they're feeling right now. We can provide a ride for someone who transportation is not easy for. We can provide a meal for someone who may not know where their next meal is coming from. And we can educate ourselves on the ways that other people are being enslaved rather than freed. Enslaved to be what society has asked and not for what Christ has created us to be. Friends, ponder these things as you go through your week about remembering each other and 
remembering ourselves into community as well. I hope that you can join us next Sunday for our time together. Um, it starts at 930 and we would be happy and love for you to join us. Until then, go in peace to love and serve God and neighbor. Amen.